so our next uh, third lecture today is by uh, Supriya Krishnamurti from uh, uh, Stockholm University, and she'll talk about chemical reaction uh, networks. So uh, Supriya, I mean, I guess it's okay if people ask questions at any point, right? Absolutely, they should. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you absolutely should ask questions at any right, okay. So people who are joining online, uh, you can unmute yourself anytime and uh, just ask questions. Okay, you can start. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, thanks very much. And uh, so this is the, the third uh, talk of the day. So maybe you're all a bit tired. Uh, you'll be happy to know that it's actually going to be rather light. Uh, in fact, this whole subject is, is not... Uh, that difficult really it's just that it's not so known among physicists which is which is a pity so given that I, I think it's interesting so so that's why uh, I'll uh, talk about this uh, this week for you now uh, yeah and I should say before I start that uh, this summer this summer school uh, idea is great so Abhishek and Sanjeev uh, you are to be congratulated for you know organizing these things it's a very useful thing and um, Yes, so other preliminaries are just that I'm trying to use the, the whiteboard here in my room. In our offices, we don't have blackboards. We have whiteboards uh, and they tend, you know, even though uh, it's not particularly sunny, but it still reflects the light. So if at any point you, uh, if anything is not clear, uh, my writing it, it's, uh, is sort of not illegible or whatever, you, you should immediately just uh, tell me. Okay, because uh, it's better that I know. I have a screen on the side here that I, I will look at once in a while just to see that it's all on the board. Uh, I mean, whatever I'm writing on the board is visible on the screen, but please uh, let me know as well. And the same goes for the sound. Okay, so if, if there's any problem with that, let me know immediately. And uh, about questions, um, uh, as Abhishek said, you should definitely uh, sort of just uh, those online, unmute yourself and ask. And those in, in the lecture hall, I mean, grab the mic and ask a question uh, anytime and any question, absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think the last bit of the preliminaries is that maybe what we will do is we'll do uh, 40 minutes and then maybe take a 10 minute break. Uh, in that 10 minute break, I can, I mean, if there are more questions, I can answer them. Okay. And then we can do another 40 minutes. Uh, if that's okay. Is that okay, Abhishek? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yes. Yeah, so for those of you who, who don't know me, uh, you know, so I, I also did my PhD in the Tata Institute TIFR long back, uh, around Abhishek's time uh, and uh, a bit before Sanjeev. Uh, since then, I was, uh, you know, in postdocs in different places, etc., and somehow landed up here in Sweden. And now I'm a faculty here at the Department of Physics. Okay, so those are the preliminaries. Uh, now, uh, so some of you might have seen the abstract uh, that I uh, that that's there on the web page about and the reading material. Uh, so, so there I tried to explain what the goal of this thing is a bit, and but I want to emphasize that a bit more. But before I get there, maybe it's good now to just talk about what are these, you know, these chemical reaction uh, networks. Uh, so, what are the kind of systems that are modeled as chemical reaction networks? And I, and I hope you'll see that these are quite a, a large uh, class of systems that could be modeled in this way. So, let's just talk about what are these chemical reaction networks first, okay? Uh, I just wanted to also say that maybe I won't be able to keep track of chat messages while I'm talking. Okay, so that we can do in the break. But of course, if you have a question or if anything is unclear, you should just unmute and ask. Okay. So uh, chemi chemical reactions. Okay, so chemical reactions are something you've seen, right, in chemistry. So in chemistry, You have, uh, let's see, yeah, I think it's visible. Okay, so you have reactions like H2O goes to uh, some ions here, or uh, yeah, I don't know, nitrogen and hydrogen form ammonia, right? So, so, so these are chemical reactions. 
uh, and you've of course seen those. And uh, notice that you know this kind of symbol is for uh, reaction can go this way or reaction can go that way. So you can dissociate to form ions or you can uh, join back to form H2O molecule. Similarly, you can form ammonia going this way or dissociate that way, etc. So, so this this symbol we use a lot. Okay, so those are just chemical reactions, and in the in the context of uh, you know equilibrium statistical physics. Uh, you know, one uh, sort of uh, it's textbook material that if something reaches chemical equilibrium, I mean, like if this reaction reached chemical equilibrium at constant temperature and pressure, then we expect that the chemical potential of the sum of the uh, reactants should be equal to the chemical potential uh, of the sum of the products. Uh, or rather sum of the chemical potentials of the products. Okay, so, so sum of the chemical potentials of the reactant should be equal to sum of the chemical potentials of the product. Uh, uh, so, so, yes. Sorry, so I think the second equation not balanced, no? Uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> you're right. Thanks, Avishay. And that's 3H2 maybe. Uh, oh yeah, so maybe actually, yeah, that should be 3H2, you're right. Okay. Correct, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yep, now it's balanced, yes. So, so basically, uh, yeah, so basically if you have these kind of uh, chemical reactions in equilibrium thermodynamics, you don't talk very much about how the equilibrium was reached. You just say, okay, when it was reached, okay, then it's, uh, it's going to be, you know, these chemical potentials are balanced in this way, right? So, so, uh, but you don't often talk about how these are reached and, uh, when can such an equilibrium be reached, et cetera. So, so we will talk about some of those kind of things here. And in fact, we won't talk about thermodynamics at all, okay? just the sort of dynamics in some sense. That is not to say, of course, that thermodynamics is not very interesting, it is. But first we'll understand the dynamics and that's what we'll do in the set of lectures. Okay, so yes, so this was uh, you know, one, uh, one set of, uh, so this is what we'd call chemical reactions. Now, if you want an example of a chemical reaction network, here's one example that we will take, uh, that we will use a lot uh, in this set of lectures. And this is what's called enzyme kinetics. So an enzyme and a substrate form an enzyme substrate complex which breaks up into an enzyme and a product. But the enzyme can uh, leave or enter the system as well as the substrate. Okay, so what was that here? I hope this is uh, focused. At least on my screen, it looks a bit focused. Okay, so, 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 so this is, so, so this for example, would be an example of a very simple, uh, uh, network, okay. Net by network, because there are two, two of these, two, two such reactions, which we have to uh, consider together. Why are we, why do we have to consider them together? Because, well, uh, these two reactions together control how the species change, okay? So this is a good time to know what are species. Uh, so these are all called species. This one. This one, this one here. Okay, this is of course a species. Okay, so this which is to denote some external uh, input source or sink is not a species, but this is a species. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm using this uh, also to sort of introduce a little bit of terminology already. Uh, uh, this is something we'll use again and again and again. Okay, sorry, so I don't want to look. If I stand here, then I'm not blocking the board for you. Okay, so basically, if I have uh, you know a chemical reaction uh, sort of uh, combined set of reactions like this, then uh, you can imagine that you know suppose it, you know what's going to change. What's going to change are these species. Okay, so the species numbers are going to change, or the species concentrations are going to change. So species are a very important thing to keep track of. So species. This is okay. Species, yes. 
And when we talk of things changing in time, when we write some equations for the rate of change of concentrations or the, or, or the probability rate of change of some probability distribution or whatever, then we will, uh, we will, everything will be in terms of these species. So species are important to keep track of. Uh, but at the same time, you see that these species come together and, and form something, okay? And that's also going to be very important to keep track of. So this thing is called the complex. This whole, everything that occurs on one or the other side of this, this symbol here, this, this both way going arrow symbol is a complex. So this is a species and a complex. This is a complex. This is a species and a complex. And now this phi we will treat as a complex and this is a complex. Okay. So basically we have uh, uh, how many species? We have species E, S, uh, E, S, P, four species. And we have Uh, how many complexes? One, two, three, four, five, six complexes, which are denoted as E plus S, E, S, E plus P, E, Phi, and P. Okay, so, so, so those are the species, those are the complexes, and you'll see how they play a role. Okay, and then a little bit more terminology since we are right here. Is uh, is about you know so we had, we said this is a network so that was just you know if we look at individual reactions that's just a chemical reaction but this is now a network we call it a chemical reaction network uh, and in sorry was there a question uh, I had a question <clears throat> yes yes you don't have uh, this phi corresponding to the product. Uh, no, no. I mean, you, you could, I suppose. I mean, so uh, one could have introduced a new equation with phi corresponding to product also, that product is also removed or uh, input into the system. But usually the product is something that's formed, you know, from these things. I'll show you a little picture later that will make it a bit clearer. So typically, you know, in this enzyme kinetics that's considered in biology, you don't have a phi uh, that is considered along with the product. But one could, I mean, it's, it's no problem. That would be, you know, one more equation that we take into account. Uh, so, Supri, there was one question in the chat. Uh, what is S yes. and uh, what is S and is it not complex? Uh, this was a question in the chat. Uh -huh. Why is S not a complex? Is that the question? Okay, first of all, when I say complex here, remember, we are not talking of complex numbers, all right? So it's just this, uh, this uh, sort of uh, collection, you know, that joins together is form, a, form the complex, it's called the complex. So like here, this was both a species and a complex, H2O, and these are species, and the com combination of them is called the complex, right? Similarly here, N2 is a species, H2 is a species, but N2 plus 3H2 together is a complex. Similarly, NH3 is both a species and a complex. Uh, so this S here is, uh, is just coming together as a, aha, uh, uh -huh, yes, you're right. So you're right, I made a mistake here. Great. So it should be a complex too, correct. Thank you. Right, so I'm, I'll continue making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so. You can, uh, yeah, so, so, so I know that you are all uh, with me there. Okay, okay so that, the, you're right. So this S, of course, is definitely a complex. Okay, so E plus S, everything that appears in this box is a complex. Uh, and then it turns out that S actually is a species too, but nothing's stopping it from being both a species and a complex. So when we say a complex here, then we'd have to take into account the two as well. Right, the two is called stoichiometric coefficient. But if you talk of only the species, then it, this this NH three by itself is the species. And when we write, uh, and the reason we are so interested in species is because that's what we are going to write equations for. But we'll see that these complexes are going to play a role. Well, of course they do play a role because that's how the species interact. Okay, so as I said, there's uh, one or two more things that we want to take from uh, with us with from this uh, from this uh, picture here. 
And that is that I said network, right? So network would mean, okay, so there's this reaction and this reaction. Uh, there's a the question. Uh, yes. question. Yes, yes. yes. So, uh, yes. Uh, why is phi not a species? Can you please say again? I think I missed that. So the phi is why, is, uh, uh, why is phi not a species, did you ask? Yes. Hmm? Okay, so, so we'll see that, you know, okay, very good. So uh, uh, you'll see that a bit clearer uh, in a while. I mean, but think of, uh, think of, of it this way that, you know, uh, if what am I interested? If I if I if I write down something like that, okay. So, uh, I mean, I could be of course interested in many things, but one typical thing to start with is that you know I'm interested in time evolution of quantities, right? And then maybe they reach some steady state, maybe they reached a fixed point. If I'm talking of concentrations, I'm interested in understanding some properties of that. Uh, and you know, writing time evolution of phi doesn't make any sense. It's some source of uh, it's something like vacuum or whatever. It's some source of, you know, this thing, which is a bit outside my system, a source of E and S or a source. I mean, if you're talking of P, some source of P. So it's some source and sink, which is outside my system, which is providing, uh, providing me uh, these particles, okay? Like some chemostat or something like that. So I don't, I don't talk of time evolution of that. So the species are all things which I talk about the time evolution of. Was that a bit clearer? Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, like a reservoir or something. Uh, yeah. Pre yeah, precise. Yes. Uh, about so, the yeah. Uh, it's another question. Yeah. Uh, the stoichiometric coefficient is part of the complex or it's not? For example, in the ammonia reaction? It is. It is. It's very important. It is part of the complex, but not part of the species. Okay, thanks. Hmm? Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah, so yes, I have yeah. what is the main difference between this chemical reaction and chemical reaction networks? Uh, so there is really uh, no, I mean, no difference. I mean, I just meant that, you know, chemical, uh, it's ne a network is just a bunch of chemical reactions. That's all. Uh, which, of course, I, I cannot, uh, you know, analyze independently of each other. So I cannot analyze just this without taking this into account, right? Because both those two together control how much E there is in your system, how much P there is in your system, and in fact, also control other things. Okay. Uh, are we excluding P from being a complex, or it's also uh, a it, uh, it's a species, right? But it's not a complex since it's not appearing in just al alone by itself in its own black box. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'll see, and you'll see how all these different things play a role uh, very soon. Okay. But it's very nice that you're asking all these questions because it's it's extremely important that we know these things. Okay, so uh, I mean, uh, know at least uh, this basic definitions we shouldn't be con confused about. So it's very good that you're uh, asking all these questions. Okay, so there are one or two more things. So more definitions coming. Okay, so uh, we talked of species, we talked of complexes. Now we have this network, which is these two chemical reactions that are taking place together in your system. Uh, the, um, okay, so if you think of it as a sort of graph, okay, then you can sort of see that there is one connected component, that one, and this is another connected component. There is no way that I can write, I can tag this along in here somehow, I can't do it. So I have to have this separately and this separately. So the number of connected components in your network are called, uh, let me see, I think you'll be able to see, okay. They're called, this is very important, linkage classes. And we will denote it by L. Okay, you can see that. So how many linkage classes are here in this? There are two, okay. In this particular case, there are two. So that's one more definition. 
uh, if if there was just one one reaction by itself, then it's just uh, the linkage class is just one, right? So this reaction by itself or that one by itself, uh, the the linkage class is just one. Uh, in this particular case, these two are connected because they share species, and both of them together, both these reactions together, are going to control how much species you have in your system, right? So. Uh, so, so there are so this is two linkage classes, and so this is just to introduce, and we will keep using this terminology, so you'll see that. And there's one more thing uh, that's important to note here. Uh, you could ask, for example, uh, or rather maybe two more things. Okay, so you could say, uh, you know, why are these arrows going both ways all the time? Is it not possible that they just go one way? Uh, and it is actually. So we can consider reactions where arrows go just one way too. But it's very important that we have uh, uh, some property of the system. So when all, re all uh, reactions have arrows going both ways, that system is called reversible. OK, this is a sort of, uh, this field actually is a field. Uh, sorry, let me stand here so I'm not blocking the board. This field actually is a field uh, where a lot of uh, mathematicians work, uh, strangely, and not many physicists, because it's related even to things we've looked at, but uh, it's, it's a field where a lot of mathematicians work. And so a lot of this terminology is something that they use routinely in their papers on in this subject. Uh, and so it's a bit confusing for us when they say reversible, because this reversibility has nothing to do with stochastic reversibility, okay? But we will see. Uh, we we will talk a little talk about that. So it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with detailed balance. That's what I meant. But nevertheless, in this context, just now the definition is just that if every reaction goes forward and backwards, forward and backwards, then it then this whole network is called reversible. If some reactions are going only one way, okay, then the network. can be something called weakly reversible. So weakly reversible, and you're going to see a more, uh, you're going to see a, a, a sort of slightly more precise definition uh, shortly. But in, in this context, weakly reversible means that from every complex, I have, a, you know, I have a way to reach every other complex, okay? It's sort of like our ergodicity like we talk about. So from every complex, I have a way to reach every other complex. In this case, of course, I reach it directly. I go from here and I can immediately come back. But it could be that maybe I had to take a loop and come back or something. Uh, we'll see an example shortly, okay? So, so these concepts are also important, reversible and weakly reversible. And then there's one final thing uh, if, you know, that we can learn from this, from, this, uh, from this picture here. And that is that if I have, uh, you know, so, of course, I say something is converting to something, but that doesn't give you any information, right? So I have to actually tell you at what rate it's converting. So, so maybe I have, you know, some rate K1, K1 bar, K2 bar, K2. Okay, I hope you can see those, yeah. And then you have, uh, yeah, some K3, K3 bar, whatever. So these, these things are called rate constants rate constants. And we have a bunch of them, a bunch of rate constants here. Uh, and it still doesn't tell you actually, it still doesn't tell you enough information to start writing equations down because you need to know now still uh, how does you know it depend on the amount of stuff that's already there, right? So it's K1 times something related to how much of this is there. Clearly, if a reaction is taking place, it has to depend on how much of the reactants are there, okay? Uh, and we will talk about a specific rule for that, about how that, you know, so, so the, most of the results are related to a specific rule for this dependence on how much reactant is there. So we'll come to that today. But so these are some of the things that one can learn from this plot. Let's take a little bit more, a few more examples before uh, I tell you what our goal is, like I mentioned in the abstract. So, okay, so now I, Maybe remove this one. So as I said, you know, so 
chemistry, biology, okay, we expect to see a lot of chemical reactions or chemical reaction networks. But uh, there are several models we study in physics too, where Uh, which which uh, can be thought can be framed in this language. So uh, think of uh, you know those of you who know think of the zero range process. But for those who don't know, I'm going to describe it. Okay, so so I have let's say uh, for 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 the beginning, I mean uh, just uh, you know for a start rather, just think of some one D lattice we'll see that the dimension doesn't play any role. But think of a 1D lattice that, and let me call everything that sits on site number one, S1, site number two, S2, right? And, and then what sits on them are these particles, let's say, or whatever. So sites can be empty, they can be full of particles, uh, any number of particles can sit on one side and they can hop with some rate, which can be different for different sites, no problem. Uh, to, uh, so in the, like in, 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 you know, in the simplest possible uh, description of this model, you could say everything hops to the site on its right, let's say, right? So this can be written as a chemical reaction network uh, very, very nicely. All, all you have to say is that S1 goes to S2, goes to S3, goes to S4, whatever, okay, S5, S6, S7, okay, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, something is happening at the edges. I could have uh, a phi on both sides. I could have a phi coming in there and a phi going out there, or I could have periodic boundary conditions. This S7 connects back to S1. Okay, that is an example now of a weakly reversible network in the sense that from S1 to S2, I go direct, but from S2, if I want to go back to S1, it has to come in some other way, okay, through phi or through the periodic boundary condition. Okay, so, so that's an example of the weakly reversible uh, network. I should, so uh, of course I can have networks like this, right? Like I have some A uh, maybe going to be uh, just going to be, let's say, A going to be. That's not weakly reversible because uh, there's no way from B to come back to A. Okay, so the, the 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 sort of classes of networks that we will talk about are either reversible or weakly reversible. Okay, so and we we will continue uh, sort of discussing this aspect. So uh, you you'll see this repeated. Uh, I just said, I mentioned that, you know, what the dimension doesn't matter. So dimension doesn't matter here because you see, once I write it down like that, uh, then, you know, it could be on any kind of network. I mean, I just have a rule. This S1 goes to S2, it may not be something right next to it. It could be some site, S2 goes to some S3, some other site, S3 goes to some S4, some other site, et cetera, okay? So, so this uh, zero range process is a, an example of something can be written as a chemical reaction network. A lot of properties are known about the zero range process. And we'll see that at least many of those properties uh, make sense in this mathematical framework that we are going to describe. Okay. Uh, there are many variations, of course, on this. And there are, of course, other kinds of uh, chemical reaction networks too. Let me see. Uh... Uh, so, uh... Yes, yes. Yeah. Can there be any partially uh, reversible structure in, in this long structure? Like so suppose S1 goes to S2, goes to S3, goes to S4. Can there be S yeah. S4 goes to S3, just that? In, in sure, the, sure, uh, you can, like in you full can. Network. So yeah, like that you mean? Yeah, the, like right? that, like uh, all the other- Yeah, yeah, normal, sure. Uh, and will, yeah, will you it can. be like called the partially reversible or anything different than the other things? So, so this, you would still call it weakly reversible just because, you know, maybe this one reaction set can go one to the other, but in general, the others have to, uh, okay, okay. In, in general, the others have to sort of, uh, I mean, not immediately, you know, so the back reaction is not immediately accessible. So you would still call such a network weakly reversible. Okay, so like we can only, have only, this kind of yeah. You can yeah. absolutely have it. We, we will see several examples. Yes. Okay, thank you. 
Hmm? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you already mentioned this, but uh, just to make sure, I mean, so this is completely different from this uh, uh, Kolmogorov's uh, definition of reversible Markov cross change, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. It's diff different. It's different. Okay. It uh, in some cases it may coincide. Okay, so we will talk about that. But in general, it doesn't have to. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Uh, yes. So just to take one uh, more example, you you have uh, you know so there are several other fields where things can be written as uh, these chemical reaction networks. Uh, so there is, for example, uh, I think it's ecology or population biology. You study something called Lotka Volterra. Okay, so for a very simple example of this, uh, you 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 can say okay, there is a there are uh, rabbits which are which you call A, and these rabbits can. Uh, become two rabbits so they can reproduce then then they get eaten up by a wolf uh, and you know then the wolf can reproduce and then the wolf can die okay so that's a chemical reaction network uh, or a, a very very simplified sort of prey predator uh, sort of network which people study a lot okay and uh, note it's neither reversible nor weakly reversible Okay, so it's not within the framework of our of our theory. Um, and then of course there are other fields too, like you know, in, in these last two years, we've heard a lot about epidemiology, uh, so this SIR models, etc. Though all those things can be written as chemical reaction networks. Okay, so 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 those are so those are the kind of models we are going to study. Okay, so I just wanted to give you all these examples just to show you what is it that we are going to be talking about. So this is what we are going to be talking about, uh, and then you could ask what are the goals. Okay, so so what we will do is that we will uh, first, I guess, in today and I guess a bit of tomorrow as well, we'll talk about how to set up you know equations sort of uh, equations for changes of concentration so we will talk about two kinds of descriptions deterministic and stochastic in the deterministic description we'll talk a little bit about how can you write coupled equations for you know say changes of concentrations of these species uh, uh, given you know given uh, that i have specified for you how they convert one to the other okay so how do we write this deterministic uh, description uh, and how do we solve it? So once we have written it down, what you will get is a sort of coupled set of coupled uh, differential equations, ODEs, ordinary differential equations, and uh, they will often we will see be nonlinear. I mean, they will look at least pretty nonlinear. Uh, however, there is some structure behind them in certain cases, uh, depending just on some topological property of the network, which will imply that you're guaranteed to have for any value of the rate constants, a fixed point, one single fixed point, a unique one, okay? And uh, so that is, uh, and that is this condition called deficiency zero, which we will, we will talk about. So of course, I'll have to tell you what is a deficiency, et cetera, but we will talk about that condition. And that's a well-known result from very long back. Uh, more recently, uh, there were these authors who showed also that there was, if, if that condition holds for the deterministic description, then if I write a master equation, a stochastic uh, sort of description for the system. So now I will not write equations for changes of concentration. I will rather write equations for change of probability distributions. Okay, so probability that I have so much of E, so much of S, so much of ES, so much of P. I write a master equation for that. Those master equations, of course, depending on how big the network is, can also look pretty horrendous. However, if this deficiency zero theorem holds, then you're guaranteed that you have a solution for the master equation. Not just that you have a solution, but it's of a factorized form. Okay, so it's extremely interesting, uh, uh, you know, set of results uh, which we'll get to. So first, we'll talk about deterministic description. Understand that well because that's where the early results are from. And then we go to the stochastic uh, description. And the, the references, as I mentioned, were uh, that I've given in the abstract are this uh, very pedagogical and entertaining book by John Baez and uh, Jacob Biamonte, 
uh, I, it's freely available on the archive. Uh, and the more recent paper by Anderson, Krasia, and Kurtz, a 2010 paper, is also mentioned in the abstract. So these are the two main references I'll be using. And I mentioned the chapters uh, that we'll mostly be following, at least in the beginning of the lecture series. And then after that, I'll see how much time all these things take, and then we may we may do more stuff. Okay, so so that is uh, uh, that's it. And the interesting thing about these results is that. Uh, if for a given class of network, okay, if certain properties hold, it holds for any values of the rate constants, okay. So you're guaranteed that that's going to hold, which is very, which is very useful, okay. But that being said, of course, I would say that those equations are not. I mean, these kind of uh, networks maybe not the only thing of interest, right? In biology, you have much more complicated networks where you these conditions may not be met, okay. And there you will not necessarily have only one fixed point. You can have multiple fixed points or limit cycles or, or all kinds of complicated behavior. So we won't be talking about those. Okay? Perhaps you heard about some of those in this, in this morning's uh, lecture, uh, but we will not be talking about those. Okay? So these will be the simplest, simplest sort of variety. Nevertheless, still very interesting, I think. Okay, how are we doing for time? Uh, Uh, I've forgotten now. Is that 40 minutes, Abhishek, or what? Uh, yeah, uh, 40 minutes over. So you uh, still if you, have... if, Yeah, so if, if you like, we can take a little break, like five minutes, and I can answer some questions of any of you may have, or uh, whatever you feel like. Or if you I don't feel know. like a break, we can also continue. <laughs> so that's all. I don't know. I, uh, if there are questions, then people can ask at this stage. Yeah, I think so. So, so this example that you gave for the ecology, uh, the CRM, yeah. yes, fall into like reversible or weakly reversible classes, right? Uh, they don't exactly because you see, uh, uh, right? So I I will actually shortly show you. Uh, I will show you. So, so uh, I have some slides where you know where, where there were theorems and definitions and stuff like that. I have them on the slides because it's not very efficient to write them on the on the board. So I'm going to show, shortly uh, show it to you. But it's not uh, clearly it's not reversible since every arrow is not going both ways. It's not even weakly reversible because I don't have any way to come back to one complex from every other complex, right? So. Uh, what can happen for such systems? I can have, for example. Uh, I can have uh, uh, well, absorbing states, like something just disappears out of the system, for example. Okay. So my right? question- so, so, Yeah, yeah. It's like if one of the reaction is reversible in, like if you had the double arrow pointing, in that case, uh, what, will it, will it still be uh, non-reversible, uh, sorry, it will not belong to any of these two classes that you pointed out? Yeah. Uh, it will not. So, so for example, suppose I have something like you say, A goes to B uh, goes to phi. That is neither reversible nor weakly reversible because B uh, is basically uh, can in some sense disappear out of the system. Uh, and uh, then I would ha then I, I can uh, then you can imagine that I'm going to have some sort of fixed point where there's no B and then there's no A and there's no reaction happening at all, or there may be some A left but there's no reaction happening. Okay, so that that sort of system is neither reversible nor weakly reversible. That is not to say they are not interesting. Okay, it's just not that class that we are dealing with. For the class of systems that we are dealing with, which are either reversible or weakly reversible. Uh, if these certain conditions that we're going to talk about hold, then you're guaranteed that you're going to have a fixed point, okay? Or, uh, so, so let's talk about the deterministic description first. So you're guaranteed that you're going to have a fixed point, which is positive non-zero. That means that in the fixed point, there's some amount of every species, not zero. So that's the interest in looking at reversible or weakly reversible. Was there a question about the zero range process here in the... Yeah, so can I just ask it? 
Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So in the zero range process, I was a little yeah. unclear of how you write the chemical reaction because the rates would essentially depend on the number of particles on that side. Absolutely. Uh, so we are so, getting to that. Mm. Oh, okay. So like, yeah. uh, I initially thought that that might have something to do with the stoichiometric coefficients, but I guess it would have something to do with time dependent rates or something. No, so we will not consider time dependent rates, but you're right. They will have something to do with stoichiometric coefficients. So oh, we okay. will, we will, we will definitely, we are getting to that. That's a very, very important aspect. So how, because before I start saying anything about changes of concentrations, I have to tell you, I have to specify these rates in some way, a uh, little bit more than I have done. Okay, more than just giving rate constants. So we are going to do that. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Um, Ma'am, in, in weekly uh, reversible thing, uh, is my understanding is correct? Like uh, you mentioned like S1 going to S2 and then going to S3, but mm -hmm. uh, S1, S3 can also come to S1, but by a different route. Then only- Absolutely. Can... Yeah, like this. Then it can come here like that. And if that is not there, then we will not call it weekly reversible. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. We will not call it if that is not there. Okay. So this will this has to be correct for each and every, uh, like for S2 also, if S4 is there. So S4 yeah. should have a path to come from S4 to S2. Uh, then only it will be considered a, a weekly reversible. Yes. So, so within one linkage class, Okay, so so within one, you know, remember what our linkage classes were, one connected component. Uh, you have to be able to come back from any complex to any other complex by some path. Even if it's not direct, you come back in some other way. Okay. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah. So I think uh, this is, I guess, a good time to mention the the rates as as the question as one of you asked. Uh, so so the the yeah before that maybe I will show you some definitions. Um, okay, so so I just wanted to mention a few more things. Um, you know, so because this was all part of the goal, right? So where are we going? Uh, so for the deterministic description, we we will we will we will describe for you a network quantity, something that you can just look at this and immediately know what it is, okay? Something that's as easy uh, to describe for a network, uh, which will immediately tell you that, okay, those rate equations are going to have some non-zero solution. Uh, non-zero, remember, means that there is some non-zero concentration of all species in my, in my system. So at the fixed point, okay? So we are not going to talk about how this fixed point is being achieved and all that stuff. So we're in, in, in the deterministic description, we'll only talk about fixed points. In the stochastic description, we'll only talk about uh, the steady state, okay? Which could be an equilibrium state also, or it could be a state where detailed balance holds or not, whatever, but we'll only talk about the uh, steady state. But uh, we'll see that there is a very simple uh, network quantity, which you just have to, Look at the network, calculate this quantity in, in, in 30 seconds or whatever, and then you'll be able to tell. No matter how horrible the system of equations look or my master equation looks, in one case, a non-zero uh, fixed point is guaranteed. In the other case, a factorized solution is guaranteed. Okay, so, so that's that's the very, very interesting aspect. Even if you could say that these networks are, of course, not the end of the story, there are systems uh, which display way more complicated behavior than this, which may be of more biological relevance, et cetera. Nevertheless, this is a very interesting set of results uh, for this system, for this class of systems. Um, so that's basically our goal, okay? So that's where we are getting, um, I guess. That's uh, what I had to say about the goal, but maybe now this is a good time. Uh, so are there any other questions? Otherwise it's a good time to maybe make it a bit more precise some of these definitions. Uh, just to emphasize because they are so important. Okay, so let me uh, see if I can share screen because as I said, for things which are, uh, 
You can see this, right? Not yet. Not yet? Uh, no, not yet. I mean, it's, it's doing something, but we still can't see. <laughs> Mm, that's weird. Uh, let's let's wait. Aha, uh, uh -huh, yeah. So on the screen, it's black. Uh, let me do stop share and go back and share again. Yeah. Now, now it's can... yeah. I really don't know. Uh, these are some of those mysteries that one never solves. <laughs> Why this works or not. Okay, so basically our enzyme kinetics again, uh, you know, so so this is a very interesting uh, system that uh, you know everybody starts with in biology. Uh, and then you asked, somebody asked about why is P not sort of, uh, why don't we have a source and sink for P? And I just had a little picture for that. Uh, uh, you see, uh, in in uh, you have this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Can you see my little uh, pointer here, or? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, great. So you see, there's an enzyme, and then there is this substrate that we were calling S, uh, and then this substrate actually, fit, you know, sort of fits on this enzyme in some way. That's how it became an enzyme substrate complex. And then it dissociates uh, and this becomes a, a product, okay? So the enzyme is left and then this becomes a product or these are the products you could say. So this P is all this stuff. Okay, so then uh, we can think of the enzyme being supplied to the system or this S being supplied to the system, but the product is something that's being formed out of this reaction. Okay, so, so that was, this was just something, just something standard. Okay, so in biology, of course, you have much more complicated chemical reaction networks. I mean, not that we are going to deal with those kind of things. Uh, I mean, we could, I mean, as I said, this network property is something that's actually not bad. That's not hard to co compute for any network. Uh, and if, if this network property has a certain uh, value, uh, you know, it's a certain number, uh, we are going to actually see that it doesn't matter how big the network is. It's, it's going to work the same way as any other network. But in any case, this was just to show you that in biology, you actually have very complicated looking networks like this map kinase cascade, or in fact, the things that happen inside a cell. Don't ask me what's going on here, but you know, it's all sorts of stuff going on inside a cell. All of these things can be sort of uh, written as these chemical reaction networks. Okay, so, okay, now let's get to some definitions. Okay, just because, it, as I said, all the papers, uh, that we deal with here are sort of by mathematicians. Uh, somehow uh, physicists have not yet gotten into this field that, as much. So, so, you know, everyone begins with some very uh, formal but very precise definition. So this is just saying things that we've already said. Uh, so if there's a bunch of species, a bunch of complexes, and a bunch of reactions, uh, then, you know, that's uh, that triple, that set of all these things is what I call a chemical reaction network, okay? No matter whether I'm describing something in chemistry or biology or ecology or physics or whatever. Okay, now comes the weakly reversible part. So the chemical reaction network is called weakly reversible. If for any reaction, there's a sequence of directed reactions beginning with this, this, uh, this as the source and that as the product, okay? So that means there must exist a path of going through several other uh, reactions and coming back to this one, okay? So it doesn't have to be direct, but there has to exist uh, such a thing. For, uh, so within one linkage class, uh, every uh, source, uh, you know, should also become a, a sort of product in some way, if not directly, then in some other way, okay? So that's, that's, that's uh, weakly reversible. I've taken these from this paper by Anderson, Kressling, and Kurtz. Um, let me see, I think. I think that's basically what I wanted to show you here. So I will, let's get back to this now. Okay, so, so so this was some preliminaries, and now we want to do some modeling. And for that, we have to tell you a little bit about 
what are the uh, uh, rates. Okay, so how does this one reaction happening depend on the amount of stuff that there is? Okay, so what we are going to talk about uh, is uh, let me see. Maybe I will. So we need to mention, so we are going to do some deterministic modeling. And for that, by deterministic modeling, I mean that we want to discuss something about how the numbers of these species or concentrations or whatever are changing in time. Okay, so now I have to tell you something about the rate Constant. So let's take a look at, at our favorite example here, our enzyme kinetics. Okay, so the concentrations, so these are my species, these are my species, and each of them, uh, and I'm interested in how these are evolving, let's say some concentration of E, S, uh, E, S, and P, so I'm interested in that. And uh, and as I said, we are going to see that if the reaction uh, obeys some, you know, the network obeys some some certain rules, uh, then I'm guaranteed that at the end of the story, I'm going to get some non-zero values of all these. So none of these is going to be zero. Okay, so if my network uh, obeys these rules, so we're going to see that. But before I write down an equation for that, of course, I need to tell you how this this is happening. So so that's so we are going to use rates which are called mass uh, action. So mass action rates. And uh, they are very simple. Uh, all that they're saying is that, uh, look at this reaction. So E plus S goes to E X. Uh, I had a number K1 here, right? So I put the K1 there. I hope you can see that, yes. So at rate, K1 times uh, X, E, X, S. Okay, so that's our mass action rates. The most generic rates that you would consider are these mass action rates where you would say that it just depends on the amount of stuff that's there, not XC to some power or XS to some power or something, just XC times XS. So, and the rate at which E of S goes back to E plus S, and here I had K1 bar. Uh, and this happens at rate K1 bar uh, X of E. Just depends on that. Okay. And now here's where the stoichiometry comes in, as we mentioned. So, uh, so for example, if a, uh, so let's say 2B goes for some reason into A plus B at some uh, reactions re uh, constant with some, with some uh, rate constant epsilon. This happens, so that means that this reaction happens with at, at the rate epsilon times XB square. Okay. So XB, the B was the species. This, this is the, uh, these are the complexes. And you see that the stoichiometry plays a role there. Why XB square? I mean, so you imagine that in this deterministic description, things are very well mixed. And so it's a question of how much, uh, like, you know, uh, at, at what rate I can get two Bs together. Okay, so, so that's the, it's related to some concentration square. Or if I was thinking of a stochastic description, as we will, then it's related to, so in the stochastic description, uh, let's see. At some point, I'll have to remove this, but okay, let's try to avoid this for now. So in the stochastic description, I will have something like, uh, let's take this one. K1, N, E, N, S, or in this case, I will have K1 bar N, E, S, 
the amount of stuff that's there, the numbers. Or in this particular case, I'll have epsilon n b n b minus one. Okay, proportional to the number of distinct pairs I can make of these. So that that's going to be very important. Okay, so a lot of these results hold when the rates look like that, uh, which are actually quite sensible rates to have in general. Of course, you could say that, uh, well, in biology, we don't often look at, I mean, we look at mass action rates, but we also look at something called Michaelis-Menten, for those who know, for those of you who know. But actually, Michaelis-Menten uh, rates can also be obtained from mass action rates if you just assume that, say, for example, this reaction happens at a much slower scale, time scale than this one. Okay, so mass action rates with some time scale separation gives you a lot of other things. So mass action rates are quite basic. So these are the these are what we are going to be dealing with. Okay, so and with all these different little pieces of information, now we can actually start writing down an equation for for the rate of change of concentrations of these species in this in the, in this particular reaction network. Okay, so maybe we should do that. Um, okay, so it's going a bit uh, slower than I thought, but you know, it doesn't really matter. We have the whole week in front of us. So I think it's better that we, we do things a little bit uh, uh, properly. However, I mean, I'm happy for any input at the end of, at, at the end, uh, at, at, you know, when we finished for today, if you, you'd like me to go a bit, a bit faster or whatever, so. Okay, so let's write down some uh, equations now uh, for these, for these, okay? Given all this stuff now, all this information here, uh, we know now how to do it. Uh, and it's maybe something that you can, you can also uh, try to do in, in, in the tutorial, maybe. Okay, so, so let, me, but let me just write down at least some of these equations. Um, mm -hmm. So let me see. I should have been a bit cleverer uh, about where to write this, but now I'm going to leave this on the board since we this is the okay. So let me write down. So basically, remember this is what we we want to write down a set of coupled differential equations for x e x f x e s and x p. Those are the things. Those are the species. Those are the things that are changing. Uh, so let me write down an equation for x e then. So how would you do that? You would say d by dt of x e. Okay, so you just keep track like you do of everything that reduces and uh, uh, reduces the e in your system and increases an e in your system. So for example, if a reaction goes that way, it's reducing the e. If it's going that way, it's increasing the e. If it goes that way, it's increasing that way decreasing but e also changes there so it's going to look a bit long but not bad uh x e x s uh plus k1 bar x e s minus k2 plus k2 bar x e s minus k2 x e x p Right. You should keep track if I'm making any mistakes here. Minus k three x e plus k three bar. Okay. I hope you could see the whole part. Yeah. Okay. So if I've not made any mistakes, then that's all. So basically all we did was just keep track of all the reactions that change in E and that increase it or decrease it, right? And I can do the same for all, all of them. I can write uh, the same for D by DT of X. S is equal to whatever I can do D by DT of X E S and I can do D by DT of X uh, uh, P. Okay, remember, so I'm writing the equations for the species. And what will these be? There'll be a set of nasty looking, uh, you know, uh, couple differential equations and so on and so forth. Okay, so very typical for what you get from for these kind of chemical reaction networks. 
and in general you know systems of these these kind of uh, ODEs can can display myriad a myriad of behaviors like they they can have limit cycles several fixed points they could all those fixed points could be stable or unstable or uh, you could have unique fixed points uh, or you could have extinct extinction events like absorbing states all kinds of things could be happening right but as i said we will actually uh, we will actually see at least one class of these where you can actually predict what they're going to have that you're going to predict that uh, what you can predict is that actually you're going to have one single unique fixed point for any values of these rate constants uh, for which uh, uh, you know the all these concentrations are going to be positive so it's in the interior of your sort of species space it's not and um, one of them is not uh, sort of blowing up and the other one zero or anything like that you're guaranteed that such things are not going to happen okay uh, and in fact that it's even sort of locally stable so we are going to see that. But before that, uh, before, uh, so why don't you try uh, um, writing down the set of coupled uh, equations? Uh, and, and, then we, and then you can try to, so they are going to look kind of, you know, rather long. But now I'm going to show you an actual, a very uh, a nice way to write them, okay? Uh, in the following way. So, um, hmm. So, okay, now I have to get around this thing again. Okay, maybe I just have to bite the bullet and get rid of this stuff here. So we have now 25 minutes. Okay, so let me just draw this reaction network here for you. E, uh, you can see this here, yes. So E plus S goes to E S goes to E plus P and E goes to phi goes to P. And this was K1, K1 bar, okay? Just anything, I'm just calling them that K2, uh, K3, K3 bar, K4 bar, K4. Okay, so I hope you can see that. So now I'm going to show you that this set of equations can be written very nicely. Uh, and for that, we need a little bit more, a little bit more uh, definitions, okay? So, so to notice this structure, the mathematical structure that lies behind this set of equations, uh, we need a few ways, you know, so we, we said our species were, E, S, E, S, and P, right? And now let's say that's, okay, this is a sort of four, let's think of them somehow, let's represent them in this way as sort of vectors in a four dimensional space, okay? So in some order, the order is of your choice, but we can think of E as a one, zero, 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 S, E, S, and P. Okay, so that's that's the first thing. Notice that complexes now can be nicely represented because complexes are made of species, right? So a complex uh, E plus S can be written So the complexes were E plus S. So it, it's good to at least work out once one thing in some detail. So let's do this. E, S, uh, E plus P. These were all our complexes. Uh, so E plus S, for example, would just be one, zero, uh, sorry, one, one, zero, zero or that's E plus S, okay, in the species, uh, in this column vector notation, one, zero, zero, one, et cetera. Okay, and now uh, using this as our background, we can define two matrices which contain a lot of information. 
One matrix will contain information about the stoichiometry. And the second, uh, second matrix is going to contain information about the reaction network, what complex is connected to what. So, so one of the insights here is that you can actually separate, separate this out okay, in, this, in this chemical reaction network. One thing, how these complexes change one to the other. The other, how the species are building the complex. And when you keep these two separate, you see that a lot of structure uh, comes out, which we can use to our benefit. So the stoichiometric uh, matrix is, yes, sorry, yeah. Yeah, um, how is phi represented in this notation? Like it is it zero, 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 zero? Uh, like how is phi in this matrix? Yeah, matrix? exactly, yes, yes. So phi will just be zero, 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 zero. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So you see that you know d by dt of that doesn't make any sense, but nevertheless it's a complex. It's playing a role, okay, and it's going to play in the role, play a role in the two matrices that I'm going to talk about now, which is the stoichiometry and the and the thing that tells you about the network structure. So the stoichiometry and the adjacency graph of the network, two things together, using those two in a good way, we are actually going to be able to write the the those rate equations very very cleanly. Okay, so the first matrix. Uh, it's, it's this matrix called the Y matrix. It's often called Y. Uh, and and for, to make this Y matrix, you have to do it this way. On the, you label the rows by the species, E, S, E, S, and P. Okay, let me see if that's the same. And you can choose any order there, of course, as you want. But once having chosen it, you should, of course, stick to that. And then you can label the rows by the complexes. So here you have your phi, and then you can call it uh, E and the S uh, and the E plus S and the E S and the E plus P. Okay, and as we said, phi was zero, 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 zero. Why? Because phi does not have E, it does not have S, it does not have E S, it does not have P. So this uh, matrix element there tells you the stoichiometry, how much of that species is there in that complex, okay? So you see that it's a nice way to keep track of the stoichiometry. Uh, there is one of E here. E, so let's look at E, this row. Uh, Supriya, e is not there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah. in your, uh, that uh, top right, uh, uh, that uh, second equation, is it P or S? Oops. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Thanks, Abhishek. Yes. Yes. And it's in the S. complex should be also S, right, instead of P. Uh, in the uh, yeah. So uh, in the just be, uh, uh, when you write all the complexes, it should be S instead of P. Uh, yes. Yeah. Correct. 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 Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks very much. Yes. Excellent. So. So, okay, so that was our, you know, the usual, it's uh, the usual thing that we've been talking about, right? So we have the species, we have this complexes. And now we have this Y. Uh, and this Y row by row is just going to tell you how much of this species is there in that complex. So it's keeping track of the stoichiometry, which is very important for us, okay? So E, for example, is not there at all in phi. It's there once, the stoichiometry coefficient is one. Not there, one, not there, one. S, not there, not there, one, one, not there, not there. ES, not there, not there, not there, one, zero. P, zero, 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 one. So you see, a very easy matrix to write. Of course, it's not going to be a square matrix unless in some very special case that of species and complex numbers are, are the same, are coinciding. Okay, so that's one stoichiometric matrix. And then there's another matrix, which is also very important, which is just the adjacency graph of the network. So uh, let me write that down. So you see that uh, the columns of this, this matrix, this Y matrix, are exactly how you denote complexes in the species space, right? I mean, phi had nothing like we wrote down there, zero, 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 zero. This column is a E uh, complex, which is of course also an E species. 
This column is the X complex, which is also the S species. This uh, E plus S is a, a complex. It's not a species. So there are two uh, ones there at the right places. And then this ES is a species and a complex. This E plus D has the two ones. Okay. So you see each column is exactly how you denote the complex in the species vector space. Okay. Now let's write one more matrix A which just tells you, and this is going to be an extremely important matrix for us, okay? Very, very important, maybe the most important. As you will see, uh, we'll be able to just find solutions looking at this A uh, if, our, uh, if certain conditions are satisfied, okay? So this matrix A now is the rows and columns are labeled by uh, the complexes. So I don't know how, uh, I think, yeah. So, so this part of the board, let's see, you could see that. I think it's a bit, that's where the window is. So it's a bit uh, brighter. Okay, so phi um, E S uh, E plus S E S B or Uh, phi E S E plus S E S P. Yeah, so sorry, E plus P. Okay, so we need to label. So our how we label is our choice, but we need to be able to label the Y's and the A's consistently. So having chosen a certain, uh, uh, so so you're going, you can guess this Y is going to be multiplying the A. So you know it had better have the same. Uh, sort of uh, ordering as here, phi E S, E plus S, E S, E plus P. And then I have the same thing here, phi E S, E plus S, E S, E plus P. And now we just write the rate constants uh, down here. So phi, uh, and so this is a sort of matrix that maybe you've seen many times, uh, you know, sort of in Markov processes. We are just keeping track of the graph there, just the adjacency. So phi is disappearing uh, at rates minus k3 bar plus k4 bar into E at k3 bar and into S at k4 bar. So the columns add up to zero. And then phi has nothing to do with these. And E gets into phi at rate K3. And E, uh, sorry, S gets into phi at rate K4, uh, K4 minus K4. Okay, so that's one block. And uh, these are two linkage classes, which in this matrix will show up as two blocks. Okay, and now we have this other block, which is this other stuff here that we have to write down. So E plus S goes at rate K1 to ES. I hope you're able to see this. Uh, sorry, now that's getting, I'm, I'm, I should write a bit bigger than that. Minus K1, K1, zero. And ES uh, does all that stuff. It goes on K1 bar here, K2 bar there. So minus K1 bar plus K2 bar uh, into E plus S at K1 bar, K2 bar, et cetera. And then this E plus P goes as K2, uh, I guess, yeah, into E. So this is the A matrix. By the way. Um, um, yeah, yes. The dimensions of K3 bar and K4 bar, um, yeah, K3 bar and K4 bar might not be same, right? Ah, you mean because if it's all concentrations? Uh, because like uh, K represents the like rate of increase of E. Right, or right. So if, if uh, yeah, so, so we can imagine that the, you have, correct the, uh, dividing by the volumes or whatever you need to make the dimensions come out correctly uh, in the rate equations. Okay, when we talk of stochastic uh, equations, we won't have to worry about that in some sense, because so we'll just be talking of changes in numbers. Yes? 
other words like what i mean is like different uh, values in this matrix they might not uh, do do they have the same dimensions or yeah so you're saying that what is why so this matrix is only taking care of these rate constants it's not taking into account that there is an xe times xs etc right is that what you mean this is a matrix made out of rate constants not of rates right excellent so we are getting to that so so this is the matrix oh, only sorry. made out of rate oh. constants yeah yeah i didn't understand how the diagonal elements are assigned like what is the um, description for doing that the diagonal elements are just minus of the other elements in the same column so you just have to oh. ensure that the column sums add up to zero okay and, and uh, um, what are the uh, like yeah. so what would happen if we sort of had a reaction that uh, a goes to 2a with some constant k1 uh like that okay a goes to 2a at some k1 like that yeah so would 2a be considered a separate complex here or yeah yeah uh, and it. we and we will consider exactly that example a little bit later anything that appears on one side of the arrow is a complex no matter what and the stoichiometric co coefficient is included in that yeah got it so this is a complex that's a complex but this happens to be a species too okay yeah great so now we come to this uh, which might actually be yeah we are getting close to the end here but uh, let me write this down so now we have a y matrix and a a matrix uh, and now that rate equation okay uh, and this is something that you can try out so first write the rate equation down in all its gory details then write this y and the a and then show that the rate equation is so simply written like this d by dt of x now by x i'm being a bit uh a bit uh not so precise so maybe i should write this x is a column vector with x e x s i mean maybe i should write the vector symbol here just to be clear x e x s x Yes, X P. Okay. So D X by D T is equal to Y times A times one X E X S. Here is your uh, rates rather than just rate constants coming in. Okay, I hope you can see that. So that's uh, it's a little bit. Uh, I hope you can see that. Okay, so so this is uh, you see that the rate equation, uh, that very long rate equation, d x e by d t, d x s by d t, d x e s by d t, d x p, which are all intercoupled, can be very nicely written in terms of these matrices as that y. And y and a have the right uh, dimensions that they can multiply each other, etc. And a, uh, yeah. And then a, uh, and then there is this column vector. A has the right dimensions that it multiplies this column vector. And this column vector is the column vector of our somehow our mass action. Uh, so it has information about how I mean each complex converts to something else using the correct mass action rates. Okay. So, because here, remember, the A had only rate constants, as uh, one of you pointed out. So, so this is for phi. This is E, the concentration of E. Excess, concentration of excess. This is X E times excess is how the this E plus S changes into anything. And then there is an X E S, and then there's X C times X P is how this E uh, plus P changes into anything. So, why don't you try that out? This is going to be very important, uh, and this. From here, we'll follow a lot of insights, a lot of insights, because, and uh, let me just tell you a little bit, uh, was there a question first? 
I, yeah, uh, so I, I mean, uh, this con concentrations, can I just think of like XC equals to uh, maybe NE divided by total number or something so that it's dimensionless and... Yeah, yeah, I think that's a better way to think about it because, uh, yeah, exactly. Otherwise, these rate constants will have to have some volume. Dimension and all, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah correct, thanks. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. So, so you see, so this, so we have uh, this, and I'm going to call this psi vector. So I'm going to say this is equal to y a psi. So x dot is equal to y a psi. Okay, and uh, and I'm just telling you a little bit what's coming ahead. Okay, because remember what I said. We said we are going to look at fixed points. Okay, so what does fixed points mean? It means that these concentrations were doing whatever. I began from some initial condition. Everything is changing and changing and getting messed around. And then finally, at some point, it stops changing in time, right? So what does that mean? It means that that is zero. X dot is zero. That means that Y A psi should be zero. Okay. How can it be zero? Okay. It's what we have to think a little bit about. In how many ways, how many different ways can it be zero? Okay. So, so keep this in mind. So that's, this is going to be coming. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, maybe. Maybe I will just introduce one other thing in the next six minutes that we have left and then we'll stop for today, okay? Uh, so this one other thing is that, uh, you know, so we introduce this Y and the A and the Psi and there's one other important thing to, uh, to, to introduce before you are able to calculate this network property. So let's, uh, um, should I get rid of this? Okay, maybe I okay, so this one other thing is that uh, we so so dx by dt is uh, changing in some way and it's going to reach a fixed point. But because we have this uh, you know this reaction network here, I somehow know how it's changing, right? Because every reaction, in the same species space, I can, uh, so, so let's, let's take this and let's do something and let's write a vector for every reaction now, okay? We've written a vector for a species and, and for a complex. Now let's write a vector for every reaction. Uh, and it took enough to just write it for one way because the other way will just be minus of that, right? So for one, so let's look at this reaction, E plus S going to E S. Uh, that's uh, so I get one less of E, one less of S, one more of ES. So that's a vector. ES goes to E plus P. So I get one less of ES, I get one more of P. E goes to phi. And phi goes to S, maybe. So. And if I look at the opposite reactions, S goes to phi or phi goes to E or ES goes to whatever, it's just minus of this, right? So you can convince yourself that in this reaction, these four are independent column vectors. And uh, in fact, the only four given that reaction network. So this thing is called a stoichiometric space. This species, uh, so this is in fact, okay, so stoichiometric subspace. Stoichiometric subspace. There were four species. The dimension of the stoichiometric subspace, which is the number of uh, independent reaction vectors I can get like this is also four. So that means that the concentrations are moving around in this 4D space. If there are any uh, constants, for example, why don't you also consider uh, just as an exercise this one? Uh, okay, why don't you consider as an exercise just this without this one? Okay, 
Uh, and then work out what's the dimension of the stoichiometric subspace just for that, if I didn't have this one. Then you'll see that it's actually a subspace. The space that I had to move around in was 4D. But if I have any constants of motion, then I move around in a sort of subspace of that 4D space. Okay, so in this particular case for this reaction, we call this S, S. And in this particular case, S is equal to four. Okay, so let me give you one last piece of information before I stop because this is, uh, it's, uh, yeah, so this is where we are heading. Now there is a quantity called uh, deficiency, and then this is written as delta for a network, uh, which you can compute like this. Now you know how to do it. I can compute it with, I count the number of complexes in my network. I subtract out the linkage classes and I subtract out the dimension of the stoichiometric subspace. And then I get a number. Okay, just now this number could be anything, but we'll soon see that it can be zero or it can be positive, it can't be negative. Okay, we will see that. But just now, just take this, that this is what we have here. And now, the and this is something I can easily calculate for this, right? So, so for example, let's just take that as an example. Uh, I have, how many complexes do I have? I have six. How many linkage classes? Two. What was the dimension of the stoichiometric subspace? Four. So in this particular case, efficiency is zero. And this is this condition. If this deficiency is zero, then we are guaranteed that these uh, rate equations uh, will have a unique fixed point for any value of the rate constants, that that fixed point is stable, uh, and, uh, and that it's uh, uh, also that it's uh, unique, that you know I I'm guaranteed that I'm not going to have cycles or anything. Uh, it's a unique fixed point for a given value of these rate constants. Okay, so that's called the deficiency zero theorem. And maybe uh, I wanted to maybe show you the definition of the theorem and then we will see it again tomorrow and then we'll stop for today. Uh, or rather, I'll just show you the statement of the theorem rather. Okay, so this is what we said. The deficiency of a chemical reaction network is uh, given by this, okay? So number of complexes minus linkage classes. So this is why we spent some time trying to understand what those things were. And here is the, uh, let's, let's leave, let that be. I'll come back to that tomorrow. And so here's the deficiency zero theorem. Okay, so if a, if a chemical reaction network is weakly reversible and has deficiency zero, and the rate constants are positive, okay? Rate constants should be positive. I mean, negative rate constants don't make any sense. Uh, then for mass action kinetics and any choice of rate constants, the rate equations will have precisely one fixed point in each positive stoichiometric compatibility class. So stoichiometric compatibility class is the same as stoichiometric subspace. This solution is complex balanced. Okay, that we'll try to understand, okay? That's going to be something we try to understand. Any sufficiently nearby solution approaches it, etc. If the network has efficiency zero but is not weakly reversible, then I'm guaranteed that it does not have a positive solution or a positive periodic solution. So we we'll try to see, we'll try to go through the proofs of this, um, and I'll be following a bit uh, this book by Bayes and uh, Biamonte, and we will not go through all aspects. We will not maybe spend so much time on stability, etc. But we'll try to understand up to this point at least that it has a unique solution that it uh, in each uh, stoichiometric compatibility class that the solution is complex balanced, et cetera. So we will try to get to that point. Again, I think uh, maybe with that, I should stop for today. Thank you. Uh... So, so, I mean, can you explain once more this, how you computed the, this uh, stoichiometric uh, subspace? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, that's the sort of thing that requires a little bit more work than just counting the number of complexes and linkage classes. 
what I need to do is uh, in this species space, remember the species 4D space is where my concentrations and everything is moving around it. I want to somehow understand the rules that it uses to move around in that 4D space, right? And what are the rules? The only rules I've been given are this network, okay? So this, if, if, I, if I, so I remember how I said this complex. So I try to depict this each reaction uh, in my as a as a column vector uh, in this four in this four D space. Okay, can you so, explain that column vector? Sorry, the first yes. one minus one minus one. How do you get that? The first one, the first one is giving you this reaction. E plus S goes to E S. So if E plus S goes to E S, then there is one less of E, one less of S and one more of ES. Okay. Because, because these rows were, you remember, uh, uh, sort of uh, defining our species, were being labeled by our species rather. And P didn't change at all in this reaction. In this reaction, ES goes to E plus P. So ES, there's one less of it, but now I got one more of E and one more of P. In this one, E goes to phi, and in this one, phi goes to S. But of course, you could say, well, actually, there are more reactions. What about all the back reactions? Why didn't we worry about those? But, uh, but you see, if I consider the back reaction, so let's look at the back reaction, E S goes to E plus S. It's just the minus of this. So if I'm interested in the number of independent such column vectors, then I don't have to worry about the minus of that, right? If this would be, I had one less of ES and one more of E. Does that make sense? Okay, so the, the, the stoichiometric subspace, the counting is just the number of independent equations, reactions. Exactly, exactly, right, okay. exactly yes. I will show you, yeah, so I should show you. So it's the, it's a, to use the mathematic terminology, it's the span of that, uh, yeah, space. Okay. Uh, I, I'll show you a proper definition as well tomorrow. Uh, so but, this, but, but basically that's what it is, yeah? So this might not be true for weakly reversible reactions, right? If, is that correct? What might not be true? I mean, it's like suppose, uh, uh, if if one of the reaction only went one way, uh, yeah. So, so right now, as you mentioned, like these. Uh, so if we consider the back reaction, then these yeah. Are the minus one, right? Yeah. It might not be there, right? Abs in, in absolutely, the absolutely. So, uh, but you know that's no problem. So tomorrow we are going to do a lot of examples of computing this deficiency. I thought we'd do it today, but uh, that's no problem. But uh, let's do one such example now that you asked. For example, you know, if I have S1, our, our what we said was our uh, zero range process, right? S1 goes to S2, goes to S3, which goes back to S1, let's say. Then uh, what's the dimension of this stoichiometric subspace of this? I mean, here the species and the complexes are the same. Okay, so S1 goes to S2, uh, this this will can be depicted by you know minus one of s one, uh, plus one of s two like that. S two goes to s three. Uh, depicted by nothing happened to s one. There was minus one of s two plus one of s three. Only two. And you can convince yourself that if you look at the generic zero range process, the at least the ones the examples I showed you, they're all deficiency zero. Okay, if you count the species linkage classes, et cetera. We will, we will do all these examples tomorrow as well. But, but you see for a weekly reversible as well, I can write this down. Uh, Remember the back, re uh, uh, the back reactions are not contributing to independent column vectors there anyway, right? So. What about S3 to S1? Yeah, but S3 to S1 uh, is like this. Uh, one, S3, and one. But you see, it's just a sum of these two. 
So if I call this vector, uh, whatever, R1, and this is R2, this is kind of like, uh, what's it? Minus R1 plus. It's my R1, yeah, minus of R1 plus R2, right? So, so basically you have to count the dimension of this space, this stoichiometric subspace It's going to be, uh, uh, I mean, it's important because it's telling you somehow how, uh, you know, this, the play that you have, how much play do you have? This things are changing, numbers or fractions of these things are changing. Uh, they, then what is the, somehow the uh, space in which it's changing as well as what's the, uh, rules for it to change, right? So we'll see that just no understanding somehow the structure of of uh, this is all that it takes in, in to get all those powerful looking results. So as a shorthand rule, we can always say like uh, reversible. Whenever we have a reversible CRM, then mm -hmm. the number of like equations or number of reactions is basically equal to the subspace dimensions, right? Uh, um, that, uh, okay. So like, um, okay. Yeah. yeah so that, uh, I think that might, uh, work. Uh, I have to think of a counter example. At least in the examples I've given you that first, I have to think if that's a very general rule. Did you okay. work out the one in which, in which this doesn't work? So that the, there you're certainly correct. The sub, sub, subspace dimension is two. So the subspace dimension doesn't have to be the number of reactions. Um, doesn't have to be equal to the number of reactions, right? Because I mean, think of this. Um, yeah, but this is- I mean, I could, I, yeah, yeah, but I could have things going both ways too. So in that, so suppose like S1 goes to S2 and S2 also mm -hmm. goes to so, so the middle one is actually reversible reaction. Yeah. So would you call the whole CRN to be like reversible? No, every reaction has to be. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so right now we have a, this weekly. Uh, so, so the one that you just drew now, is this? Uh, yeah. No, so as I said, every reaction has to be uh, going both ways in order to be called reversible. So reversible is a very strong condition. What I was saying is like, if we have a completely like a, a reversible CRN, uh, like, you know, chemically. Yeah, so suppose, uh, suppose this was also allowed like that, for example. In that case, it should be like dimension should be three. Is that correct? Uh, no, uh, because, because you see, uh, uh, in this particular case, uh, I, I, I get these two vectors, which are, I mean, always a sum, right? So every other vector I write will be not, uh, will, will not be independent. Yeah, thanks. Uh, one more question oh, is so like, how do you write this uh, psi column vector? Yeah, very good. So the psi is very important. And that is just the, the complexes. So I've, I've in, in the same order that I've written here, phi E S X E plus S E S E plus P. So it's it's exactly the same uh, for phi, I put a one. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll see why. I mean, I, I, we'll see why, how to build up this uh, from the X vector and the Y that I've erased. Okay, we'll see how to build that up. But just now it's very easy to understand why it should be that. First, if you wrote down those rate equations, you'll see that that's the case. But it's also easy to see from the fact that uh, X E is, is, I mean, E is given by a concentration of fraction X E. S is given by a concentration of fraction X S. E plus S come together to do whatever they do, right? So, so it's X E times X S. Uh, e S is just by itself something. So it has a concentration. And E plus P, two species come together. So it will be X E plus X, X E times X P. If it was two e plus p for whatever reason, this would be an x e squared. So you see, this is this this way of writing the complexes is taking care of the stoichiometry of the of the complex as well. 
If this was a 2e or e plus 2s, uh, let's say it was an e plus 2s, this would be xe xs square. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, so this is requires a little bit of getting your mind around it, but if you play around, you'll see that at least if you write the rate equations down, we see that's the form we get, okay? Then why do we get this form? How do we use this form? All that stuff we'll talk a little bit. I mean, I should uh -huh. add at the end of all this that uh, I'm not an expert in this thing at all. Okay, So I, I learned about this by myself just because I find it rather interesting. So I really appreciate the opportunity to discuss a little bit with all of you. So so it's 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 just something that uh, if first, yeah, I, I, I haven't uh, actually, uh, I mean, apart from my collaborator, Eric Smith, I really haven't had anyone else here to work on this with. So, so it's, uh, but I, some, it's something I still find very interesting. Yeah, sorry, was there a question? Uh, there's a, I think there's a question on chat uh, from Mandar. Uh, so what is linkage class? Could you uh, please mention? Yeah, so linkage class were the number of connected components of my network, right? Because I have a network here. Uh, so when I when I point to that part of the screen, uh, is Zoom or something cutting that bit out, or like or blocking it in some way, or or you can see? Oh, no, we can see. It's visible. Oh, it's visible. Okay, okay. On my screen, somehow there are little windows here, and they're blocking it. But okay, uh, fine. So so this part, you see. So this is my chemical reaction network. I called it a network, right? Because there were two sets of reaction which are somehow coupled through the species. So the linkage class in this case is two. Because here is one connected component and here is another connected component. Thank you. We'll, we'll do more examples. So we'll start tomorrow with doing some examples of all these things. Uh, okay, there's one more question. Uh, why do you not uh, include the psi both as columns and rows in the matrix uh, so it becomes square? Okay. Uh, which, which one, the y matrix or the psi? I mean, the, the psi matrix. Well, okay, so psi is just one column vector. Uh, and the reason it exists like that is the rate equations look like that. Okay, so why don't you do that as an exercise? Write the rate equations down. The rate equations are not hard to write down, right? Actually, in this particular case, they're not hard to solve either, actually, I should say. But nevertheless, they are not hard to write down, right? Because you're just doing some bookkeeping. Uh, when I went this way, I lost something here and I gained something there, so I do some. So, so but if you write it, if you write it down, um, sorry, uh, can, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's me who asked the question. <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, it wasn't the right equation expression. It's actually A and uh, Y. Uh, when you write these matrices, I thought if you included the uh, phi, not psi, sorry, uh, the phi in both rows and in columns, you would have something that might be, you could, you could invert it. It would be easier to do matrix operations on square matrices than on these. Uh, so I thought maybe is it because you lose some properties if you include uh, phi, sorry, in both the rows and in the uh, in the columns, or is there any reason? Is it because numerically it's easier, or uh, it's so just yeah. now there is only. Uh, uh... Yeah, so maybe towards the end, I'll talk about another description, depending on how much time we have, where actually something like that will work, okay? Uh, where you have psi, psi, and something. So, so there will be some Liouvelian operator, which have a psi on either side. Okay, so maybe I will talk about that if we get time later. But just now, think of our uh, reason as rather lowbrow, in the sense that we, this is how, in the simplest possible way, we can, uh, you know, write our rate equation. Our coupled okay. ODEs, this is the simplest way we can describe them. So, so just now that's what, all that we are doing. Uh, and uh, this was, and from here we'll see a lot of structure coming into play. So think a little bit about this for before tomorrow. I'm interested in fixed points. Remember, I'm not going to solve for time, full di time dependence, et cetera. However interesting that might be. How can I get a fixed point here? What does it imply? Now I have all these matrices here. So what does a fixed point imply? So just think a little bit about that too. All right. Okay, I, I guess maybe we should uh, uh, stop now. I think uh, it's uh, we'll, uh, it's five forty five. So uh, yeah, yeah. You uh, all had so, a long day. You you all had a long day. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so 
so, Supriya, I mean, so today's, I think, uh, the tutorial, we thought uh, this one will be a bit too close. So, yeah. maybe uh, uh, you will give the tutorial tomorrow, right? And take 45 minutes instead of 30. Is that okay? Um, so, so uh, earlier tomorrow tutor. Yeah. yeah. So usually we we are thinking of three tutorials with thirty minutes each, but uh, yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of that we are thinking of two tutorials, uh, forty five minutes each, uh, and then you take it uh, not today but tomorrow. Okay, fine. I can do that. Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, that is fine. That is perfectly fine. So, okay. so, but at the same time, right? It will start at the same time as at six, right? Time. Yeah, six India time. So in fifteen minutes yeah. from. Uh, so yeah, maybe sure. you uh, you could take the second half uh, if you want, or uh, I mean, you can let us know what you prefer. That's fine. I I will do it as okay. as all the other as prefer. So the yeah, I mean, if you want to do it in the order of the lectures, that's also fine. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. Because the, yeah, then maybe people get a break, so it might, that might be better, yeah. right? So in the yeah, second half yeah. might be better, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, but then I think uh, should we take some of these questions that I said think about or whatever? So we. Uh, so I don't have any special questions that I, I mean, different from the stuff that I'm discussing here. So maybe, but maybe there's plenty of things here to think about too. So, or would you prefer that I give a, uh, give a specific sort of. Uh, um, uh, yeah. I mean, if you want, you can also send like any problems or any assignments or things. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also if you have any lecture notes, uh, you can send them to us. We'll upload like your whatever. If you have some notes, we can upload them uh, on the website. Maybe that helps. Yeah. Well, uh, my notes are, you know, so it's, it's, it's the stuff. I mean, so uh, as I said, I've followed some of these references pretty closely. Uh, so it's not more yeah. than that. Um, yeah. But if you like them in some cleaned up form, of course, I can do that. Uh, though maybe not immediately. Uh, but the the problems, okay, let me think a little bit about so what we should discuss tomorrow, given that we would have covered, of course, more as well. So, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, then. Uh, thanks. And uh, see, you, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.